Welcome to the Blueprint Nursing Channel, friends. My name is Nicole, and today we're diving into the important topic of fetal heart rate decelerations. At the end of this video, we'll share a memory tool so you can feel confident when you take the NCLEX. But first, let's review fetal heart tones to set the foundation. Fetal heart tones give us an idea of fetal well-being during labor. Let's look at the key components of fetal heart rate. A baseline heart rate is the average heart rate over a 10-minute period. The normal range is between 110 and 160 beats per minute. Variability is a term for the fluctuation in the baseline heart rate. Variability can be identified as absent, minimal, moderate, which is normal, and marked. Accelerations are abrupt, temporary increases in heart rate that usually indicate positive fetal well-being. Decelerations are decreases in baseline heart rate that are either benign or abnormal. There are four types of decelerations. They are early, variable, late, and prolonged decelerations. Let's dive deeper into this because each type of deceleration has its own important implications and interventions to consider. And just a heads up, we'll pair a fetal heart rate strip with each example so you can follow along. Let's begin with early decelerations. These are characterized by a gradual decrease in fetal heart rate that returns to baseline, usually at a similar rate of when the contraction ends. These decelerations will mirror the client's contractions and are caused by fetal head compression during contractions. While it may be tempting to see deceleration and want to immediately jump into action, these are generally harmless and just require continued monitoring. On to variables. Variable decelerations are exactly what they sound like. They vary. These are characterized by abrupt decreases from the baseline heart rate that vary in both shape, where they may resemble a V, U, or W, and timing. A variable deceleration is characterized by decreasing at least 15 beats per minute and for at least 15 seconds, so 15 by 15. These are usually caused by umbilical cord compression. So how do we fix them? Well, interventions that reduce compression on the cord. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Next, we have late decelerations. These are more concerning. These are a gradual decrease in baseline heart rate that start after the beginning of a contraction and return back to baseline once the contraction ends. Late decelerations are caused by uteroplacental insufficiency. What does that mean? Well, the placenta isn't delivering enough oxygenated blood to the fetus. Because of this, you can anticipate interventions that focus on maximizing that blood flow to the fetus. Prolonged decelerations are abrupt or gradual decreases in heart rate lasting about two to 10 minutes. These type of decelerations can have a few different causes, Essentially, the causes will center around prolonged interruption of blood flow from the client to the fetus. So, prolonged cord compression, uterine tachycystole, hypotension. So let's talk more about the interventions that I've mentioned for maximizing blood flow from the client to the fetus. Changing maternal position. We'll want to change to a lateral position that aids in improving blood flow to the fetus. Increasing IV fluids. The client may have IV fluids during active labor. Use those IV fluids to draw a bolus from if needed. If no IV fluids are running, maintain IV access and keep IV fluids in the client's room just in case. Discontinuing oxytocin. Oxytocin is commonly used for induction and augmentation of labor. Peep our video on oxytocin. If the fetal heart rate shows any signs of fetal distress, discontinue the infusion and notify the provider. Oxygen. This can be applied via face mask to help increase the amount of oxygen flowing to the client and subsequently to the fetus. Amnio infusion. It sounds intimidating, but just think of it as an IV infusion into the uterus. In order for a client to receive an amnio infusion, the client's amniotic sac must be broken and the client must have an intrauterine pressure catheter, an IUPC, in place. The IUPC is a flexible tube that is inserted through the cervix and sits between the fetus and the uterus. This can be used to internally monitor contractions and to infuse fluids. The purpose is to usually replace amniotic fluid and relieve cord compression. For circumstances where the fetal heart tones are not reassuring, usually with recurrent variable decelerations, late decelerations, or prolonged decelerations, you'll definitely want to be prepared for emergent interventions and potential delivery. Comment if you'd want a video about the workflow of deliveries. Okay, here's that memory tool to help remember what causes each fetal heart rate change. This tool is known as VLCHOP. 
As you can see, Veiltop is spelled out vertically and we'll go through line by line of what each letter means. Variable decelerations equal chord compression. Early deceleration equals head compression. Accelerations equal okay. Late decelerations equal placental insufficiency. It sounds kind of silly, but this totally got me through the NCLEX and helped me in my transition from med surge nurse to labor and delivery nurse. Here's the materials we used in this video. All right, thanks for stopping by. I hope you found today's review helpful. Stay connected with Blueprint Nursing across all social media platforms for more reviews and study tips. See you next time, future nurses.